Hi, my name is Megan Halliday. I'm a senior practitioner with Lifeline Dowling Downs and South West Queensland Limited. I'm going to share a short talk with you called Protecting Your Greatest Asset, You. Recently, our Lifeline counselling staff have been meeting with local farmers through the drought assistance workshops which have been organised by the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. At these workshops, our Lifeline staff presented some brief information on getting through these tough times. The current drought is affecting 80% of Queensland and it is making times tough. The government is creating several avenues for support. However, at Lifeline we recognise that you, not your land or your stock, but you are your greatest asset and resource. So we developed some tips for how to protect your greatest asset during this drought. So here's some tips for looking after yourself. Talk to others. Don't bottle your feelings up inside. Let others know how you're feeling. Get help if you need it. Don't wait and think until things have gone too far. This can include help with finances or loans, food, even medical needs. Don't let things reach a crisis point. If you feel like things are starting to spiral out of control, now is the time to seek help. Don't wait until things have already reached a disaster point. Get help now while things are starting to become difficult for you. Connect with others. Catch up with your friends and family, have a barbecue, meet for some drinks. You may not feel like it. In fact, you might be feeling that you don't want to spend time with other people at all. But you're most likely going to feel a lot better afterwards from connecting with those significant people around you. Do things that you enjoy. Watch a movie, go camping, fishing, a motorbike ride, walk, sport, do some craft. All of those sorts of activities are great to put into your lifestyle. Schedule these activities in. When things are tough, we tend to let go of those things that we enjoy. We don't look after ourselves as well as we should. But when we're going through a hard time, that really is the time to prioritise those activities. You might not feel like doing them, but most likely you will feel a lot better for doing it afterwards. So do them anyway, even if you don't feel like it. Help each other out. We're all in this together. If you've got neighbours, other friends, family who are also having a tough time, Support each other. Listen to each other. Help each other if you can. We're all there in it together. Get enough sleep. Sleep is really important as it gives our body and mind a chance to rejuvenate. Prioritise an early night if you are feeling tired. If thoughts and ruminations are keeping you awake at night, or perhaps waking you in the middle of the night, then put some strategies in place to maximise relaxation. Some ideas could include a hot bath or a shower before going to bed, listening to relaxing music. They can all help to maximise sleep. Another strategy is to turn off your mobile phones and emails, any devices at night time as well. They can interrupt your sleep and make you worry about things that are happening. Read a book or a magazine rather than looking at your device before going to sleep. Exercise during the day can also help you to feel more tired at night and give you a better night's sleep. Diet. Stressful times can affect our diet too by not eating enough or maybe eating too much. Or we may be increasing sugary or fatty snacks. Try to maintain a balanced diet. And if you can, drink lots of water. About 2 litres a day is recommended. Or even more if you are physically active during the day. Exercise. 
Regular exercise is one of the best methods for stress management. It gives you a chance to take time out. Our body actually releases endorphins while we're exercising, so our mood is boosted naturally. Exercise can also be a chance to connect with others, perhaps through a sporting group um, or a shared interest with a friend. Exercise is also a great way to improve our health and really just have fun. Do something that you enjoy, join a club, maybe just even go for a walk. Just get outside can be really helpful as well. Spiritual connection. Prayer and meditation may also be comforting and strengthening for you. It's drawing on our own inner resources and connecting us with a higher being. It may also be an opportunity to connect with other people who share the same beliefs as us, perhaps through a church or other community um, groups that you're involved in. I'd now like to look at warning signs that you or your family member or friend might need some more help. What are some of the invitations that we might notice that somebody needs more help? We might hear suicidal words. Perhaps you might see or hear statements like we've got up on the screen now. It's not worth it. I can't go on. I can't handle this any longer. You'd be better off without me. When people make these sorts of statements, it is a sign that more help is needed. It is an invitation for help. So don't ignore these statements. Some things that you can do when you start to hear statements that might be similar to this is ask the person more about how they are feeling. Ask them some more questions. Then let them know that you do care about them, that you are taking their concerns seriously, that you are listening to them. And then help connect them to further support. Maybe talk to them about phoning a telephone counselling service. Maybe help them to go and see their local GP that they trust and feel comfortable talking to. Maybe encourage your friend or your family member to go and visit a local counselling service and see a counsellor there to talk about these feelings. If you're concerned about suicide with maybe a family member or a, or a friend or perhaps even yourself, take that seriously. I've heard many people tell me stories about you know, hearing a gunshot on the farm and then they're worried about whether the gun has actually shot an animal or whether the gun has actually been used for suicide. The fact that you're even wondering if someone is suicidal, that is an indicator that more help and support is needed for that person. Take it seriously. It is a warning sign. If you're wondering, am I overreacting, it is still useful to get more help. Don't dismiss or ignore warning signs that a person may need more help. The fact that perhaps you're noticing different behaviours or you're noticing statements that might indicate that the person is having thoughts of suicide, it's better to respond to those than to just ignore them and perhaps miss something that is really important and really serious and possibly life-threatening. If you notice yourself or someone else behaving out of character, this could also be a warning sign that they might need some more help. So perhaps you've noticed that somebody is more angry, perhaps they're uncontrolled or more reactive than normal, perhaps a bit on edge, Little things are setting them off. Or maybe you've noticed the opposite, that the person is more withdrawn than they normally are. Perhaps they're normally quite a gregarious, happy-go-lucky type person and then you're noticing that they're quite withdrawn, they've gone quiet and, and you know not talking to people like they used to. Both of those situations indicate that somebody's 
you know, not, not themselves. They're behaving a little bit differently to the way that they normally are. And this can be a sign that the person might need some more help. Another warning sign could be increased alcohol or drugs consumption. So perhaps you've noticed that the person is, is drinking a bit more than they normally did. Um, or they're taking more drugs than they normally do. And they could be pharmaceutical prescribed drugs or they could be illicit drugs as well. But if you've noticed that they seem to be perhaps using them as a way of coping, that could be a warning sign that they're needing more help. So if you've noticed some of these warning signs, what do you do then and where do you go for help? Well the first thing you might like to do is perhaps to talk to some friends, a family member, health professionals, counsellors, church or a spiritual advisor or one of the 24 hour telephone counselling services. Tell somebody how you're feeling. Often people worry that if you ask questions, especially around suicide, that your loved one may be more likely to hurt themselves. This is not the case. Generally speaking, it is a relief for the person to talk about how they're feeling, even if those thoughts include suicide. Asking questions will not make things worse. It gives an opportunity to get help for the person. The person will feel more supported and cared for by you. Another barrier to getting help can be a belief like someone else is more deserving of help or other people are worse off than me. It is really important to look after yourself first so that you can be there for your family, friends, employees and your community. Accepting help is not a sign of weakness. Hard-working, competent people can often find it difficult to accept help. But I want to encourage you to remember that by looking after yourself, you're actually better able to look after your family, employees and other people that are depending on you. Another source of support could be your local GP, someone that perhaps you've known and you feel that you have a trusting relationship with. Contact your GP, make an appointment, talk about how you were coping. Sometimes highly stressful situations over periods of time can lead to depression or anxiety and GPs are in the best position to assist you with this. Another source of support may be local counselling. So to find you know, who provides counselling in your local area, you could also talk to your local GP because often they know lots of services that are around and available. Um, or you can phone Lifeline's telephone counselling line on 131114. And they can put you in contact with local contacts in, in your region that provide counselling and, and other supports. I've also developed a contact list for you that could provide some other supports that you might be interested in accessing. The first one, as I've briefly mentioned, is Lifeline's 24-hour crisis line, 13 11 14. It's just the cost of a local phone call and you can call any time of the day or night and talk to a counsellor about anything that you're experiencing. They also have a website which is www.lifeline.org.au and you're able to get on there and have a look at what local supports are available. There are some information on there as well that could be really useful for you too. As I mentioned at the start of this recording, I work for Lifeline Darling Downs and South West Queensland Limited and we offer quite a large range of counselling and supports across the South West region of Queensland. I can be contacted personally on 1300 991 443 
or you can talk confidentially to any of our administration staff and they can put you in contact with someone who's local to you who can provide some assistance to you. Kids Helpline is, is another great support and their telephone number is 1800 55 1800. They also have a website that provides a lot of uh, different supports as well and it's worth a look www.kidshelpline.com.au Another good resource is Men's Line and their number is 1300 789 978. They also have a website too which can be really useful as well www.mensline.org.au There is also a Rural Financial Counselling Service available. So if you're wanting to seek assistance particularly around your finances, you can give them a call on 1800 686 175. Another good support is the Murray Darling Basin Assistance and Referral Line. Their phone number is 1800 050 015. Relationships Australia is another counselling provider and their number is 1300 364 277 and their website is www.relationships.com.au Beyond Blue is another information service which can provide specific information on mental health, on depression, on anxiety and just give you some really interesting information. Their number is 1300 224 636. They also have a great website too which is www.beyondblue.org.au SANE Australia also have a helpline and their number is 1800 688 382. You might also be interested to have a look at their website too, www.sane.org. The National Association for Loss and Grief can also be a good resource too and they have a website which is www.nalag. .org.au If suicide is a concern as well, there is also the Suicide Callback Service which is 1300 659 467 and they also have a website where you can get more information on that service www.suicidecallbackservice.org.au if you are concerned about an immediate emergency situation, perhaps somebody is in progress of, of committing suicide, maybe they've overdosed on some medication or hurt themselves in some way, please immediately call 000 and, they, and you can access police, fire and ambulance through that phone line. That is 000 if it is an immediate emergency. So I have provided quite a big list there of lots of different contacts and supports that you can access from web-based and internet-based support and information to 24-hour counselling lines um, that you can contact anonymously or getting support face-to-face -face from somebody in your local area. However, I really want to emphasise that if you're not getting the support that you need from a provider, it is okay to seek another opinion or, or try another counsellor or service provider. Don't give up until you get the help that you need. And sometimes you might need to talk to a few people. There might be different people that can help you with different things that you're concerned about. Or, as I said, perhaps you're not getting quite the right support that you need. It's okay to ask somebody else for help as well. The most important thing is that you get the help that you need at this time. As I said before, Lifeline Darling Downs and South West Queensland, we do have local counselling services based across the southwest of Queensland. And we would love to help you in whatever way we can. 
I hope this short talk has been helpful to you and um, as previously mentioned you're welcome to phone us um, during business hours to get put in touch with somebody local to you who can provide you more support. Thanks for listening and all the best.